Hello students. We have already studied about what are acids. Acids are sad to taste, then they have H plus ions common in them and so many other things. In this lesson, we are going to study about some properties of acids which are very important for us to know so that we understand what are acids a little better and it is easy for us to identify if a substance is acidic or not. So we are going to start with the first important property of acid that we already know and it is about the taste of the acid. We know that acids are sour to taste. The second property that we need to know is about its corrosive nature. Acids are corrosive in nature. That means if suppose if we have hydrochloric acid, it falls on something, it will corrode that substance. That means it will damage that substance. So if it is a strong acid, Strong acid will be highly corrosive and if we have a weak acid, weak acids are less corrosive. So if we have hydrochloric acid, if it falls on something, it will burn that substance completely. And if we suppose have acetic acid, it will if affect that substance but it will not damage it as much as hydrochloric acid can do okay so the next thing that we talk about is electrical conductivity do you think acids conduct electricity yes they do because they can form ions an acid always forms h plus ions and the rest part of the acid always forms a negative ion so electricity can pass through a solution of acid. How much of electricity can be passed through a substance or an acid? It depends upon how strong or weak the acid is. If the acid is a strong acid, then it will be a good conductor of electricity. And if it is a weak acid, it will conduct electricity but not as much as strong acid can do so it is a poor conductor of electricity a very small amount of current can flow through weak acids okay now the next thing that we talk about is the effect of an acid on indicators what are indicators they are nothing but some dye powders which are used to identify if a substance is acid or not. It changes its color in an acidic or a basic medium. So when we talk about indicators, the very common indicator that we have around us is litmus. A litmus solution, litmus is a natural indicator. It is a natural dye that is extracted from lichens, plants lichens. It is purple in color. So this litmus changes to red when it comes in contact with acid and it changes to blue when it comes in contact with the base. So in acids, the color of litmus is red. Then if we talk about methyl orange, methyl orange is an artificial indicator or you can say a synthetic indicator, man-made. It is orange in color and when it comes in contact with an acid, it can change from orange to pink and if it is a very strong acid, it can change to red. So, and when we talk about indicator phenolphthalein, it is phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is a colorless substance, it is a colorless liquid. When it comes in contact with the acid, it remains colorless. There is no effect of acid on it. So, these are some very important properties that we need to know about acids. Now, let us see some of the reactions very common reactions that we can see with acids. Okay, we see the reaction between an acid and compounds having sulphides and bisulphides. Okay, for example, uh, now what are sulphides? Let's see what are sulphides. Sulphides, I-T-E-S, sulphides. 
the sulfite is an anion okay a negative ion which accepts two electrons this entire thing has a net valency called minus 2 that means when sulfur and oxygen combine when one sulfur and three oxygen combine still it is not stable so this portion this radical accepts two electrons to be stable so the entire so3 gets valency 2 now let's see what is bisulfite now bisulfite is nothing but it will be sulfite so3 but bi means h so it is also called hydrogen sulfite this entire group has valency minus 1 so it has a minus charge on it so the valency of sulfite is minus 2 and the valency of bisulfite is minus 1 okay now sulfites and bisulfites they are the ions polyatomic ions they cannot be alone they are always combined with something or the other they are always combined with metals or some non metals now suppose if sulfite that is so3 combines with sodium that is na sodium's valency is 1 sulfite's valency is 2 so when you cross multiply the formula becomes na2so3 so the compound is sodium sulfite okay and if bisulfite combines with sodium sodium is na bisulfite is h so 3 sodium's valency is 1 hso 3 that is bisulfite's valency is also 1 so the formula becomes nah so 3 and the name is sodium by sulfite this is also called sodium hydrogen sulfide so we are going to see what happens when an acid comes in contact with these we take hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid and here to we take hydrochloric acid let's see what happens okay now always remember if on the reactant side you get so3 so3 of after the reaction will always convert to so2 that is sulfur dioxide gas and there are two more products formed in here the positive part of this salt is na and the negative part of acid is cl they combine and form a salt nacl and one more thing which is formed is water so the three things formed in this reaction is nacl h2o and so2 sodium chloride water and sulfur dioxide gas now in this reaction same three things are going to be formed here so3 will yield so2 that is sulfur dioxide gas then na will go with cl and form nacl and we also get water produced in this reaction okay now here we need to balance the equation so we have 2 nacl and 2 hcl here we do not need to balance it is self balanced okay uh now in this reaction this this sulfur dioxide gas which is formed can be tested which gas it is how do we test this gas we get tested by using a paper called k2cr2o7 paper which is nothing but potassium dichromate paper k2cr2o7 is called potassium dichromate this paper is specially used for testing sulfur dioxide gas if in a reaction a gas is evolved and we have a doubt it might be sulfur dioxide we can use this paper once this paper comes in contact with so2 it will change its color from orange to red it is initially orange in color and then will change to red once so2 comes in contact with it so these are some reactions that we need to study regarding acid hcl okay so these are the properties that we need to study regarding acids and some of them here are physical properties some are chemical properties physical properties tell us how the acid looks what is its taste they are the properties which you can measure and chemical properties tell us how the acids react with substances around them so if we talk about taste taste is a physical property then we have corrosive nature corrosive nature is a chemical property of any substance it depends upon the substances chemical structure 
then we have electrical conductivity which is a physical property as it can be measured then we have indicators now the action of acids on indicators is a chemical reaction due to which there is a color change so using indicators if we test acids or base this is going to come under the property of chemical properties then uh, we have reaction of acids with sulfides and bisulfides this is obviously a chemical property of an acid here we see how acids react with sulfides and bisulfides